Charlie Cushane here to do another repair to my house. This is a 1980s style house down in Florida and the past two really bad hurricanes, 2004 Hurricane Charlie and this 2022 Hurricane Ian blew in my soffit and I had to have it repaired twice with, through the insurance company, but it was just the hassle of getting it repaired every time. So this time I decided I'm gonna fix it myself so that the soffit never gets blown in by the hurricane again. Okay, so let's take a look at what I did. The soffits on my house are an oversized 24 inches and just being held on the inner and outer edges leaves them susceptible to hurricane damage because it flexes in the middle and then pops out and then they blow away. So I'm gonna stop that on this build. Okay, what I did to make this hurricane proof is I got two by threes as you see here. And my goal was to have three supports on the outside, middle, and inside. So when the soffit is up here, it can't blow in during a hurricane. And to achieve that, I put a vertical piece all the way up to the roof, attached it to the rafters, and then made it nice and level across so my soffit's nice and level, and then put this horizontal piece in over to the rafter here. All screwed together, and then I put three pieces of two by three, the full length, all screwed together. So it's really, really strong. Here's a close up look at the piece coming down. And then this went over and attached right to the underside of the rafter. So that made a nice 90 degree connection and can't blow up. And then I added the three two by threes. So you can see it goes the full length and my entire front of my house is what really got damaged. As you can see, I've built supports everywhere. Even up here, this all got blown in. And so did all this. <laughs> and there's my vent hanging down. Okay, the new problem I have is <laughs> there is no soffit material to be had. We've checked everywhere. I, I may have a lead on some, but it may take months to come in. And it could be six months. So in the meantime, I've got this 1 8 inch steel mesh that I'm putting up to protect it from bees and wasps and any other squirrels that might want to go up in the attic. So this is sort of a temporary fix that I'm putting up. And this is a fix. This temporary fix is one that will make my wife happy. So here's my temporary soffit, all screened. You can see I screened everything. And the beauty of this screen is it's thin enough. I can uh, leave this on if I wish when I actually do the soffit. So I'll show you when I get the soffit. Okay, I started the task of putting up the siding and I did in front of the garage. And let me give you a close up of how I'm doing it. You can see in the corners I'm doing a, a double V. I just take two pieces of the J channel, put them back to back. So that's how I'm doing the corners. And then I am ripping down screen that I put up. This comes right down. <sighs> I 
I was going to leave the screen up, but I thought it'd be a cleaner, flatter job without the screen. Okay, the first thing you can see is I put screws everywhere, even in the J channel. So there's lots of screws, stainless steel, so it can't get loose. Okay, I'm in my wood shop using my miter saw to cut the soffit, and I purchased a Diablo aluminum cutting blade for the miter saw, 12 inches, 96 teeth. But before I actually cut, um, every once in a while, I get this stick cut and I put it on the blade. So I just give it a little spin. And when it's slowing down, there you go. That helps preserve it for longer. And since every one is the same, in this instance, 23 and a quarter, I have my stop set and I just give it a cut. are nice and crisp. No tear out at all. And just for reference, these are 12 inches wide. Now you can get 16, but I realized quickly two reasons why you want the 12 over the 16. Well, first, the saw won't cut out far enough. It just makes it on the 12, as you can see. 16, I wouldn't be able to use my miter box. I, so I decided 12 is better. Plus, 12 is stronger in a hurricane because this lapped ridge gives it a lot of strength. And the closer they are together, the stronger the panel is. If you have 16, there's more ability for this to flex in the wind, in the hurricane. So that's why I went with the 12. Stronger in a hurricane and easier to cut. Okay, my technique for installing these is first get it in the J channel and then as you can see I already have this drip edge which is complicating things so I actually have to bend it and get it in there sometimes I need a uh, putty knife to get it over those screws I just put in there we go Perfect. And then I put in three screws. And that locks it in. And that's it, all locked in. And then on the drip edge at every joint right here, I put a nail and these are stainless steel ring nails. So they're going in and not coming out. Here we go. That's good, solid. Okay, the last thing we gotta do is paint some screws to put on the face. A hundred and ten screws, hundred and ten feet. Okay, one more little detail 
now that I painted the screws, they're gonna go right in the middle here, one per panel. As you see, right here, this is screwed down really good, three places, so it'll never go anywhere, but this side just slid in. And I'm afraid in a hurricane, vibration, see this panel? It's wiggling. So what I'm doing is putting one screw right here. I'll show you. And it pulls it nice and tight. I have my stick for the correct measurement. That's right in the middle on that brace I put in there. Here we go. Solid as a rock. Solid there, solid here, solid here. So it's really held tight now. That is hurricane proof. Okay, here's the soffit, all repaired. It came out beautiful. I did all the way around there. Then I had to go up to the higher elevation around the front door. And then all the way around. So it came out great. I'm really pleased with it and I can guarantee this is hurricane proof. If you've enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe for future videos.